What's up, Prime Fam? Just working on the new Suma, so I thought I would get on and show people the machine and answer questions while it's running. So I'll wait for a few people to jump on and we'll chat. How's it going, Bob? I'm running the Suma tonight. If you guys have questions, let me know. Ask away. Looks like we just got a hello from Bob. And who else we got out there tonight? This thing is really awesome, by the way. It is a lot of fun, too. I missed a comment. I saw it pop up. I'm not all moved in, but I am moved in. I'm here enough that I can work, but I'm not here enough that I usually end up going back once or twice during the day. And I saw someone ask about the tools. Um, so I went with two um, tangential modules. I got the double edge knife, the kiss cut, two creasing wheels, um, and then the pneumatic oscillating tool along with the one watt router. So that's what I started with. Um, I think, I think that's all the tools right now. I'm using the double edge just to cut these out. These are for some glass. I have a fellow neighbor that is a tinter. And so I'm cutting these out for them. So it's super nice, super easy, super fast. I can go through. This is the third roll I've done for them. And the machine just finished being installed today. I ran two yesterday during training. Well, I guess, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me on my headphone? Like when I'm over here, not by the phone. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, good. Good. <laughs> I don't want to just be like roaming around and you not be able to hear me. Anyway, um, so after training last night, the trainer went back to the hotel and I ran two of these rolls. And then I'm running one more tonight. As soon as this is done, I've got a canvas print over there that I'll show you how it works. Um, but it's pretty sweet. 
So basically what I'm doing right now is it advances the media. When you tell it to run, it backs up so you can check it. So in this case, I've got a bubble from the vacuum table. So I'll just straighten it out so it's flat. And then you click run on the machine and it's gonna do its thing. You can have it auto off feed, and I tried that last night, but I couldn't keep up with it. I need to get me a table for right here. But last night when I tried to do it, it was cutting so fast, and I wasn't able to get these off and organized enough, and so they kept falling on the floor. And while I pressure washed the whole building, it's still not clean. <laughs> so. I gotta get me a table to go. I should say a table that's the right height. I do have a table right here that I'm working on, but it is too tall. It can only be about 28 inches tall. So any questions about the machine? I'm definitely not very well versed in it, although I was trained on everything. If you have any questions about the machine or about my shop or work in general, feel free to ask. I didn't know the catch basket was not included. So I would have bought it had I known that. So I probably should order one. The max cut speed, I have no idea. Right now, this is running at 800 millimeters per second. I think it can go faster, but it can also go slower. But right now, I'm running at 800 millimeters per second. And I don't know what that is in inches. But I cut, so this, this roll is 100 feet long, and if I just continuous print, or continuous cut without like, taking any breaks to go do something else, I could do it in 45 minutes to do 100 feet. I did some corrugated plastic earlier. Let me, I'll go find the sample. Um, I am, I asked, my brother owns a cabinet shop. So I asked him to make me a table that's the perfect height. Let me go get the corrugated plastic though. It's in the garbage. So this was the corrugated that I did. These ones I did with the double edge. And this one I ended up doing with the spindle because I just wanted to test the spindle and learn how to use it. And I was gonna program a smiley face, but I was too lazy to draw the whole thing. Um, so this is actually what they call an engrave cut. So it doesn't go all the way through. It's kind of like a bowling ball you can grab it. but. Full cut on the outside, and then I did an engraved cut on these. Um, and it's from right there. So again, these are from the double edge, which I'm using to cut this stuff. Um, so yeah, you can do it with the double edge, the pneumatic oscillating tool, or the spindle. So kind of cool. Lots of options. Any more questions here?
Yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to put it on wheels for now. I just need, I asked him to make a 28 inch tall table because that will bring it just below the belt. Um, four feet wide because that's the cut area so it'll feed off the exact width. And then uh, I think it was 68 or 70, 68, 69, 80, 70 inches, somewhere in there. Um, I've done a print and cut with just um, contour cutting, but I haven't done like a multi like contour cut and perf cut. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the workflow to be super efficient with Flexi. It's kind of not been playing nice, but I'm able, I have done, like I said, just a contour cut, but I haven't tested a contour with a cut through, which I would like to do since that's one of the main benefits of this machine is being a flatbed, it can do a lot more intricate and detailed things because it's a tangential. So I haven't done that yet, but hopefully within the next few days, the canvas will just be a straight cut through. Um, I did some canvas earlier and it was just a cut through as well. Made it super awesome. I still need to try banner. I want to be able to cut banners super quick and easy without having to do it manually with my king cut. So the king cut and the roll cutter are not going to be used very often. I have some gold, like Orcal 651. That's kind of reflective, but I don't have true reflective. Uh, the camera system on this has a boot that you can put on it for helping to read registration marks on like super reflective media. My ceilings are kind of tall and I don't do a lot of reflective, so I just have the boot in a box. This stuff is just optically clear security film that we're cutting right now. Any other questions? Um, the company that did the install and training was ETS. Um, I can't remember what ETS stands for. Something Elite Technical Solutions. I think that's what it is. I started as a shirt for a few days, I should remember. Um, but the guy who did it, his name was Todd, and he got here at about noon on Monday, and the table was operational by about six, but we didn't do really any training on the machine other than he showed me kind of what everything was on the panel or underneath all the panels, and then um, Tuesday we went through just kind of how to run different things, how to install all the tools, how to calibrate it. And then today we ran, like I printed a bunch of stuff so that I could try, like I tried canvas, I tried pressure sensitive vinyl, I tried poster paper, 
So tested a bunch of things just to make sure that I knew how to work it and if anything came up. Oh, I also did magnets. Magnets were really cool. I need the the magnet media didn't stick down very well even with the vacuum. I don't know if it was just the media that I had or if I should just once I print it let it lay flat for a little bit since it heats up so much from curing. But um, I think someone asked in the market I'm trying to get into. So Jim, what market are you trying to get into? You need a flatbed cutter too. So I actually did. I purchased a flatbed cutter, but there's been some issue behind it. Um, and I've also had some medical things come up, as well as um, a job that I lost my pants on. So I actually asked them to refund the money because the printer, I ordered the printer a couple months ago and it's still not here. So hopefully I can get my money back. Um, it was a used hybrid printer, a Roland LEJ640. My plan was to be able to do cardboard boxes, yard signs, cardboard stand-ups, things like that. Um, I'd still like to get a flatbed, but I got to get through the next couple of months to make sure I can actually afford it. So I'll wait for it to climb down here. So I would like to get a flatbed printer for now though. If I need to do something flat, I'll print it probably on pressure sensitive vinyl and then apply it to the foam core, the die bond, what have you, and then cut it out. But I definitely, I do want to get a flatbed printer. Let's see here. Um, if you need the, Bob, if you need the emergency, I think Grimco will actually do reflective stuff. They'll print and sell it to you. I know they'll do reflective signs, um, but I'd be happy to look into it. The biggest thing for me is I don't go after that market, so I don't really need the vinyl. But feel free to email me and we can chat about it. Um, but it should be able to cut them. <laughs> The machine's meant to do it. I did get the router attachment. I got the one kilowatt instead of the high frequency. Just because I got it because I want to be able to do die bond signs and acrylic signs. But like I said... I'm not getting a printer anytime soon, so my plans have changed a tiny bit. Uh, I would like to have a flatbed. Yeah, and Bob, Neil says 3M5100. I think, Bob, I think Neil, that's what you're talking about, Bob's request. Yeah, happy to help if I can. If anyone needs flatbed work, happy to do it. I've actually, another company here in town has offered to buy me. Um, I don't know if I want to do that or not. It definitely would alleviate my financial burdens. But I kind of like not having a boss and being able to do things with family or 
go do something for a friend if I needed to, and I don't know if someone bought me if I'd have the same autonomy. So it may just end up being that I start doing a lot more wholesale stuff. And if I can sign a contract with them, then I definitely would um, be able to buy that flatbed. Yeah, so the flatbed printer that I would likely, like the one I bought was, or did buy, or I'm seeking to get a refund. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going to get a refund. That might be a, its own disaster in itself. But um, the flatbed that I did buy was a UV. So it was the Roland LEJ 640 UV printer. Um, likely, if I were to get a flatbed, I would get a UV printer. I really like the R1000, the HP, but I just can't justify the price, and I definitely can't afford the price. Um, but you can get a used UV for a decent deal, and you can get a new one for not terrible. A new UV printer, depending on the brand, you can get them for about the same price as um, whatever this thing is called. The Sumo Flatbed Cutter. So if you were going to do packaging, cardboard boxes and stuff, what type of printer would you recommend if UV is not that good? definitely love the HPR 1000, but I definitely cannot justify spending $150,000 on a machine. I wish I could. <laughs> I definitely wish I could, because I do love my 315. It's too bad the new 800 series they came out wasn't a baby flatbed. That would have been sweet. If the 800 would have been a baby flatbed, probably would have bought it. Yeah, a lot of wholesalers, they find kind of their niche, and then they don't do anything else. Um, one wholesaler that you might look at is Fire Sprint. Um they do a lot of random, rigid, and specialty substrate stuff. I think their website's just firesprint.com. Neil, do you have a flatbed printer? It sounds like you have a Suma because you were talking about the catch basket. What flatbed do you, what flatbed printer do you have, Neil? This is definitely a new world for me, the flatbed stuff. 
I only got into doing stuff myself anyway in the last two and a half, three years before I outsourced everything. Fire Sprint. F I R E S P R I N T. Yeah, don't 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 put in fire streak. That would not be good. <laughs> um Inspiret, I think that's how you say your name. I'm doing better, but I definitely am still struggling. That's kinda hard because I try to be honest in what I do in my videos and some people like that and some people don't and so then it sometimes makes me feel discouraged about recording and doing videos. Like the most recent video that I did was the reaction video. And there's a guy named Waldo in the comments telling me that I shouldn't make videos to make money. And this, that, and the other. And it's, I don't know, it's hard because, like, I like the videos. And I like being able to help people that were or are in my same situation. And I also learn a lot from you guys. Like I've learned from Bob and I learned, I'm learning from Neil that UV might not be the best for boxes. And so I get a lot out of it. But at the same time, like for me, it's 8.15 on a Wednesday. I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday. And I can print and make videos and if those videos can make me money then it's worth it to me if not I'd honestly rather just go home and spend time with my kids and so like, it's not all about the money because there's obviously not very much in it but at the same time like knowing that there is some compensation that it can pay for my internet or pay for my cell phone then then that makes it worth it to me. Like, does that make sense? Like, is my logic flawed? I don't know. It's hard being vulnerable online and people calling you out. And Honestly, I'm just trying to help people. Nick, congratulations on getting your 115. That's awesome. If you have questions, feel free to hit me up. It's not the exact same machine I have, but I know they run very, very similarly because I just have a 315. So I appreciate that, Bob. That means a lot. <laughs> it's funny that you say naysayers because my last name is Nay. <laughs> I appreciate that, Neil. Well, then I'll just continue doing me, and I'll just, I'll be me. My short-wearing, sock-wearing, flip-flop-wearing self. My wife makes fun of me all the time that I wear flip-flops and socks. But they're just comfortable. Although I'm getting really upset because I can't find a new pair of flip-flops. And sometimes when I'm walking, I can feel the stuff I'm stepping on and it hurts. So I got to find myself a good pair of flip-flops.
but I will say this much. I was really scared to buy the Suma because of how expensive it is. And only having it running for two days, I can tell you it is 100% worth it because normally I would dread doing a job or getting a job and like selling it because I don't want to cut it. Mostly because it's, it's like lack of space and definitely not lacking for space. But now I'm lacking for tables. But the fact that like I have this canvas that we're going to cut after we're done with these, the fact that I can literally load it on the machine and the machine is just going to cut it makes all the difference. It is awesome. I definitely am kind of feeling that way too, Bob. I'm not sure if it's depression, exhaustion, something else, but I hope this panel, I hope that happened afterwards. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, mine stems from some personal stuff, some medical stuff, like losing my shorts on a job, possibly not being able to either get the printer, get a refund for the printer that I bought, and it all just, like, even today, about an hour ago, my HP Latex was giving me an error saying the PCB board on the head was dead. And so I was not happy and was freaking out because it was just one more thing. Luckily, I, I took the maintenance cartridge out, manually moved the head, and... Put the maintenance cartridge back in, turn the machine on, and um, it worked. So I don't know what it was, why it wasn't working, but I was able to print that other piece of canvas. The cutter is going to make a huge difference. I definitely agree that you should get a cutter before a flatbed or get both at the same time if you can afford it. <laughs> One of them is super helpful, at least for me, like, it's going to make such a big difference. Even doing, like, kiss cut decals, they're going to just look way awesome. Questions for me about the new space, the new machine, the old space. Anything like that? Are you guys just kind of like me, just mesmerized by how awesome this thing is? Let's see. Says we're at 14 feet. So, just a few more runs, and then I'll show you how I rigged up the back because it doesn't always like to play nice with rolls. Where's the movie theater? Honestly, oh man. The roll's out. <laughs> that scared me. Ripped the glue off. Um, so, let's see here. I'll answer the other question. Uh, did you get your new flatbed via Airmark? I don't know what Airmark is, but I bought my flatbed through Grimco. Um, my sales rep is Garrett. He is awesome. If you need his contact information, full disclosure, if you do contact Garrett, and you do buy something, I do get a commission. It's not very big, but I do get something. But I don't say it because I get the money. I say it because I really like Garrett. He, I bought my HP from him. I bought the Suma from him. I bought the King Cup from him. He's awesome to deal with. Anyway, movie theater. I actually told my wife that I need her to find me a couch on the local classifieds. So she's looking because I feel like I need something that I can sit on that's comfortable. I just cut myself. Um, 
So she's looking for a couch for me. I kind of want to put it up on top of the office and maybe frame something in or use some like ACM panels or something. No. That's nice. <laughs> Hold on, there's the last one. Um, anyway, I kind of want to put it up on top of there, do something, but probably not for a while because it needs another layer of plywood. Um, so yeah, probably not for a bit. Oh, I'm definitely mesmerized too. Yeah, the def commission is definitely not 80%. I wish. That'd be sweet. I'd be selling machines full time. Anyway, this just ripped off. But what I did was I used some bungee cords to hold this down. Because it seems like it just lifts up. And so having a little bit of tension on it helped keep it in place as it was rolling. So it worked really well until the end, obviously. But let's see here. How do I get this back up? Yes, the flatbed is freaking sweet. Highly suggested, even though I've only had it like two days. The pool and the hot tub. I actually am renting out this space to one of my neighbors. Um, I do have four E stops, but this stopped by itself because it interrupted the beam. So this is version three of the Suma. So the beam is built into the gantry, which is good and bad, but it stopped itself because of it. Um, and now the pool and hot tub. Honestly, if I were to get a hot tub, it would go over here, but I'm renting that space to make up for some of my rent because I don't need all of this space yet. So, no pool, no hot tub. Not yet. Someday, maybe. Maybe a hot tub. That would be fun. It would definitely help raise the humidity in the office, which I need because it's not humid enough in my office. Utah is just not human in general. So, now since we eased off, I could have told it to resume the job, but I didn't want to because I wouldn't have anything to cut. So I just pulled it to reboot the machine so that way it clears everything out of it and we'll load the canvas job on. And I'll show you kind of how that works. And we'll just clean up all this garbage here so I don't have to step on it. slide from the movie theater down to the hot tub. That would be epic. That would be really epic. Okay, let me turn you back here. So, what I'm going to do on the software, there's an origin button that you set the origin of the machine, so I'm just going to tell the gantry to move. I can throw the print on here. It turns the vacuum on, which is good and bad. Flatten it out. So I have the print on. So now I'm gonna actually set the origin, which it just needs to be on the media. So we'll apply that. Uh, 
And then you have to set the size, which the size basically, there is a piston in here that drives the vacuum. And so we're gonna just tell it to basically make the vacuum only this big. So that way it will hold it down. And I saw a question, so I'll answer that in just a minute. So now that that's there, then what I need to do is load the job to print. So I actually made a thing to just read the barcode. So let's see if it works. It's supposed to read the barcode and then load the job file. So I loaded the file in the software. So now in the software, I tell it how I want it to cut, which in this case, I'm gonna use the through cut, which I actually, before I do this, I actually need to test it because last time I cut something, it didn't cut through. <laughs> so we're gonna put it in the corner and we're gonna test it first. So here, I'll show you the software. It'll be a little shaky. So here in the software, you can click on the module and then there's just a test button. So it's gonna try to cut out a square. And if that worked, so did work, came out nice. Check the mat, make sure you can't see it in the mat. So we should be good to then come up here and back in the cut software, it's got the file. We have it set to be a cut through. And so we're going to output to sheet. And you hit run. And sometimes it'll go find the first registration mark. Sometimes you have to manually. So in this case, it didn't find it. So it found that's the origin spot. So if I move the arrow keys, then it moves the head. So in this case, you can see the red dot there and the registration mark. And so here, the registration mark's now lit up green, so you can hit apply. And now it's gonna go through and find them all. And then it's going to park itself out of the way. And theoretically, I should be able to just... So perfectly cut canvas with a one-inch border. This is why the Suma is a game changer for me. Because being able to program it and have the machine do it, rather than me getting the king cut out, cleaning the table off, figuring out all that stuff. It makes it so the machine can do it and it can do banners it can do canvas it can do paper it can do magnets it can do foam core it can do mdf like all the things so i like it a lot a lot a lot a lot i don't know why i turned you around i was trying to see the comments Let's see here. Okay, so Jonathan says the shop is so huge. I'd love to get a flatbed cutter, but we'd have to look at the offsite space. We're currently in a 1500 retail bay. So my shop is 3,000 square feet. So about double yours. And I have way too much space. I don't know what other tools you have, but for me, it will be wonderful. Let's see if I can just maybe pull up the questions on my computer now. Got all my work done. Let's see. It's funny. Jonathan says it's funny. We've got some of the same equipment. The 315, the 380, the 660. 
it's been great work. It's been a great machine. Um, so Bob's asking how large is the work area on the cutter? I know the, I guess that's the X direction is four feet, but it's also unlimited because it will just pull the media and continue. So if you have something that's longer than four feet, then it will cut what it can read. It will shift the media and continue to cut and it will continue to do that kind of as far as you want. The longest that I've done so far is 12 feet um, and it worked. It was awesome. Um, the Y direction, I think it's 60 something. I'm not sure. It fits my 54 inch media plus something. Um, so let's see here. Are you biking in the shop? No, since I have, I should use a bike or a scooter because it's ridiculous. But um, my daughter's birthday is in a few days and we got that for her for her birthday. So it's hiding here at the shop. Um, Jonathan says, dumb question, but how does it prevent itself from cutting into the conveyor belt? You can actually cut into the conveyor belt, but I will walk over there and show you. I will show you kind of some of the tools that it uses. It's a long walk. So on the cutter itself, it has what they call ADCs or automatic depth control. So the cutter itself is installed in the tool and then it comes over here and it will check the depth. So actually I can show you how that works. If I go to the access control software and I can click on the module, I can tell it to run it. Like if I think it's running low, then I can say, okay, let's run it. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna come over here and it's gonna use that laser beam to find the depth of the blade. So it spins it, it goes down to just find the positioning. So now it's calibrated itself. From there, what you do is you do test cuts with this button. And when you test, if it's not low enough or it's going too low, you can go up or down. So plus, blue light raises it up a little bit, negative lowers it down. So you can actually see that I have it going down nine tenths of a millimeter farther than the depth controller has it set. So it's got an ADC on both sides. So the one on the left is for module number one, and the one on the right is for module two and three, but I don't have anything in three. I could get another tangential, or I could put a drag knife that's similar to the drag knife in there. Um, but I only have one in here because this one will probably never move, and then this one comes off when you put the spindle on. So the spindle hangs there, and you move it there and it takes up both slots. Hope that helps. Let's see here. When you boot up or change tools, it uses the ADC. Hey look, there's the answer. <laughs> I do have a million dollars worth of plywood. That's not mine. I'm renting out that part of my shop to help pay my rent so that's what it's whoa that's what it's there for it's being rented but yeah that's a lot of money on plywood i like it bob a <laughs> cutter with a freaking laser beam on its head I do. So I actually, Bob says I need a large format printer. 
So that's what this space is for. That's why I saved it um, to hopefully put a flatbed printer there. Okay, let's get back, see if I can actually get the comments here on my computer. Okay. Oh man, I'm getting served an ad. Oh no. I can still see the comments. Sweet. <laughs> Jonathan, oh my, I take my money. Yeah, not like that's one thing that I told the tech during the install was I'm like, wait a minute. Like I just made this video on how to set up the perf cutting on the roll cutter and it is the biggest pain in the butt. You mean like within a few clicks, like I can do the perf cutting? Well, in the, in this case, they call it through cuts. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap, that is freaking sweet. So it is like being able to just run it in the software and do it super quick and set the depth. Like my biggest complaint right now is being able to figure out, um, I need to figure out the right way to get the workflow from Flexi to the Suma because it seems like right now when I send something to the Suma, it's not honoring the cut um, paths. And it's when I did um, the core blast, I sent it as two different paths, but it read it as one. And so then I had to figure out how to change it in the Suma software, which was super not helpful. Like I was able to figure it out, but um, that's the big hurdle going forward is figuring out the kind of steps for the best workflow. But any other questions? I got my, my jobs all done. I just need to roll them up so they can be delivered in the morning. And it was fun to kind of show you guys the machine. Again, I don't know very much about the machine. I literally finished training today. Thanks for jumping on, Neil. Um, but if you have any more questions, happy to stay on for a few more minutes before I head home. It's kind of strange now. Home is not where the shop is. So I actually have to leave and go somewhere. I also don't have everything set up. I'm missing my monitor. I have another monitor, or I guess TV, that we had at the house, but I stole it. It's not going to be at the house anymore. So. Any more, any more questions? Apparently someone came on and thumbed down the video. So if you're here watching and enjoying, if you give the video a thumbs up, I would appreciate it. I guess I'm boring, so someone thumbed down to me. Well, if y'all don't have any more questions, then I'm going to get wrapped up and go home and see the kids for a few minutes before they have to go to bed. I usually go to bed here in about 20 minutes, so it'll be perfect timing to be able to hopefully read them a story or lay with them in bed and see them before they're asleep. Seems like the last few weeks I've been up and gone before they get up and home after they're in bed, so I think part of that is what's led to my lack of motivation, depression, anxiety, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Okay, well, thanks all for jumping on. Appreciate the thumbs up and the questions and the community. So we'll see you in the next video.